How's it going, everybody? Ragawalk here. So, I figured it was time to finally make this video. Uh, you know, obligatory 10 characters out of like that in Tekken 8. Now, I know I haven't really talked much about Tekken on this channel. That's mainly because when I started this channel, that was kind of like. I believe it was after Tekken 7 was already out. And. I know there were some characters I was interested in they were adding, but it just wasn't much for me at least to talk much about it. So I didn't really bother with it that much. You know, I mean, I did talk about Soul Calibur a lot, and I guess that's kind of associated with Tekken, because it's sort of you know, another band dynamic game, it's another one of fighting games, you know, some loose connections with it. But, you know, I do want to talk about Tekken 8 a little bit. I am excited for it. Even the graphic the game, fight from the fall looks amazing. Um, however, of course, you know, when I feel like graphics get a lot better with games, that usually means content goes down a lot, especially with fighting games. We especially all know that by now. Um, so I'm not really sure how big this roster is going to be. Usually Tekken's rosters are usually pretty sizable, but that is a lot of times because they've been using, I believe, you know, kind of old, older models, or they just don't, don't update them that much. You know, they have the same move sets and all that. It seems like the move sets are still generally similar, but I'm not sure. You know, we, we only know two characters in the game so far, so it's probably a little too early to make any roster amount predict predictions, but I just figured we'd talk about ten characters that I would like to see come back in the game. So let's get started. Number ten. So with Ancient Ogre or Ogre, depending on which name you'd like, you prefer for him. Um, you know, he's the first form of the villain from the iconic Tekken 3, and we haven't really seen him in a mainline game since then. He's just been kind of dead, I and mean, we've seen him in that. We have seen him in Street Fighter Cross Tekken, which was cool, and he was pretty cool in that. He was definitely a character I used a lot, and it was interesting because they actually kind of gave him a voice as well. He's kind of the bottom of I'll, You'll find out why he's kind of at the bottom of this list, but I do like Ancient Ogre. Um, I would love to see him in a new game. Story-wise, I mean... It's a fighting game. Characters come back from dead all the time, especially villains. He is the the first kind of non Mishima, non Mishima boss character. And a cool thing you can do with Ogre is because he does take moves from other characters. He can maybe have him, you can have him use moves for characters that don't make it in the game, which I know isn't really a, you know, it's not a really good uh, compensation, but I guess it's better than nothing, and it does kind of make him at least a little more unique. I do know they did, that's what they did in Street Fighter Cross Tekken. They kind of gave him moves from character, from Tekken characters that they didn't put in the game. Like, I believe Lee and Wang were two of them. It's been a while, but that's two I remember. So, yeah, not really much to say here. It would be cool to see him back. But, you know, again, we'll get into more with Ogre later. Number nine. Claudio Serafino. So number nine is Claudio, probably, in my opinion at least, one of the best new characters they added in Tekken 7. I always just really like this guy, his design, his backstory, for the most part his fighting style. I kind of like that he's basically an Italian equivalent for a Quincy from Bleach. He does seem somewhat important to the story, he seems to be kind of, you know, kind of uh, against the devil characters. It's kind of weird because I kind of thought he'd be a good guy, but I, if I remember correctly, it sort of suggests that he was somewhat of a bad guy, if anything, which I guess is even more on brand for the whole Quincy Sternritter comparison. That's what he really was inspired from. Um, now, the only thing I guess I sort of wasn't entirely crazy about with Claudio, it didn't bother me as much as other people did, but his, like, I guess, strikes were kind of as if he was sort of slapping people. I, I guess what I figured they were going with is that he was kind of doing, like, kind of cuts, slices with his hands, kind of like a... Uh, the fighting style, I forget the name, that um, Ray from Piss of the North Star used. That's what I figured they were going for. It just maybe wasn't depicted well enough. So maybe they can cut, if, he, if he comes back, they can touch upon that. I would like to say he has a good chance of being back. I don't really know how popular he is, but I just feel like story-wise, and just because of that fact he was one of the first new Tekken 7 characters, he'll be a little more prominent. Actually, he might have been, I think it was him and Katarina were the first new characters added in Tekken 7, if I remember correctly. So yeah, I'm pretty sure he'll be back, and I do hope he is. You know, he was one of my mains, and I also did appreciate that, you know, kind of being from Italian descent, that he was the first Italian Tekken character as well. So that's another reason he kind of held a special place in my heart as well. KO. You win. 
Niente male. Number 8. Elisa. So this one is going to be a hot take, but I would personally like to see Eliza or Eliza come back. I always liked her design and her moves, so it was pretty cool. I mean, she was kind of a Shoto character, and considering she's the only one that's not really a guest character, she'd at least kind of fit that mold again. Assuming we're not getting Akuma and Geese back, of course. But it's really hard to say whether she'll be back or not, because uh, it's like... I mean, she debuted in a free-to-play game and actually managed to come to a mainline game from that. Granted, she was a pre-order bonus character. I mean, she is pretty unique. You know, I, I also, I don't know, I, I kind of get a kick out of the whole narcoleptic, narcoleptic vampire thing. I think that's funny. But yeah, I think she's a really cool character. And no, not just because of the hotness, though I'm not going to deny that, of course. Hopefully she comes back. We'll see. I mean, they do seem to prioritize a lot of the sexy female characters these days. But I know Lisa's in that weird kind of not a huge part of the story thing. But then, well, then again, what character is part of the, a big part of the story in Tekken that's not a Mishimi these days? Number seven. Red yeah. Whoops, sorry, wrong Alex. Alex. So yeah, this Alex, the raptor, the boxing raptor Alex. Um, I always really like this character, and I feel like he's hardly in any games. And I, you know, and I really think it's silly that you know we get the bears back all the time, but we can't get the box, the boxing raptor and kangaroo back. Now, I know if any of them were to come back, Roger would probably be more likely. Um, I've always just kind of, you know, while I'm fine with either of them, I kind of just prefer Alex. I mean, I just think a boxing raptor is a little cooler than a boxing kangaroo. However, though, supposedly there was a thing where we they're not allowed to have kangaroos in fighting games anymore or something like that. I forget what the reason is exactly. It was really stupid, whatever it was. But hey, I think a good fix for this was then, okay, just have... Alex, I don't think there's any rules or laws or anything regarding a boxing raptor being in the game. And I, I you know, and it is, and I do appreciate that Tekken does kind of a delve into its more just goofy aspects. But I don't understand why this is one thing that kind of gets, gets ignored is poor Alex. And he, hey, he even made him a little bit more unique in Tag 2 by giving him some, like, I think, like some uh, bite. Some biting moves, some biting throws and all that. So yeah, I don't know why. Why can't we just have this character back? I, I personally like him a lot more than Kuma and Panda. Number six. Armor King. So I like King. I've always liked King. However, between him and Armor King, I will always choose Armor King. I just highly prefer his design, and I do actually prefer his playstyle as well. And it is kind of frustrating that these days, spe specifically, that Armor King is always kind of a character that gets added. He's either a kind of special edition kind of character, like how he was in Tekken 5 Dark Resurrection. And then in Tekken 7, he's a DLC character. Granted, I guess Tekken 6, he was a base game character, but that game didn't have any DLC characters. And that also literally just kind of copied everybody from Tekken 5 and just added some more, if I remember correctly, except for Jim Pachi. But hear me out, like, all right, can we just get Armor King in the base game this time? And you know what? All right. If it really comes down to only having him or King in the base game, will it really be the end of the world if maybe we just mix it up a little bit and we prioritize Armor King this time? Honestly, everyone I talk to about King and Armor King seems to always prefer Armor King. So I kind of think King is just put in just because he's a more iconic staple. It's kind of like Katana and Melina in Mortal Kombat. Most people, from what I, I can see, prefer Melina. She seems to be more popular. But Katana seems to always be prioritized more just because she's, I guess, a bigger icon, more story importance. Well, story importance, you cannot really argue with Tekken. Because, again, most of the characters that are Mish not Mishimas are ignored in Tekken. So that really should not matter anymore. And I just think, will it really be the end of the world if we just maybe prioritize Armor King this time? And again, that is if we can't have both in the base roster. I would honestly be okay with that. Ideally, we'd have both, but I just like Armor King more. Let's just keep him in the damn base roster this time, please. And it was really silly how they kind of made up the excuse that him and Marduk kind of knocked each other into a coma. I actually think it was funny because me and my one friend made up a joke where it's like they, him and Marduk would be playable in the game, but they would just be being in the stretchers, just fighting the whole time, kind of just barely in a, barely conscious. <laughs> Hell, I, I'd be fine with that if it really came to that again. Number five. Or. 
Now for this one, so I would prefer Raven come back. However, if it really came down and we couldn't get Raven back for whatever dumb reason, I would be fine with getting Master Raven back. I, at the end of the day, I do like them both. But Raven, ever since Tekken 5, has become one of my favorite characters in Tekken. And I was kind of, I, I was I was honestly kind of upset that he didn't come back for Tekken 7, especially because I thought he was kind of becoming a mainstay. He's, I thought, a popular character, and he, I thought, was pretty important to the story, if I remember correctly. I think he's one of the only Tekken 5 characters that made it in Street Fighter Cross Tekken. I, I think him, Asuka, and Lily, I believe, made it. Then again, I don't really think there was that more aside from those characters. I think a lot of one was like Feng Wei and Double Jin, but anyway. And, and, and I do like Master Raven. She is cool. Like, you know, And I mean, they have the same fighting style, but I, I mean, if we got to have one, I just think, you know, Raven is just more iconic. I think he's just, he's just a really cool design. I mean, I know, yeah, he's basically this like ninja, <laughs> ninja Wesley Snipes, ninja blade, but that's part of his appeal. A lot of characters in Tekken are inspired by real martial artists. So yeah, Raven, in my opinion, is one of the coolest Tekken characters. I don't see why we had to take him out. I mean, I, I think supposedly, I don't know if it's true or not, that um, Master Raven was inspired from uh, Michonne, or um, I forget the actress's name that plays her. I know it's um, hard for me to pronounce. So I guess maybe that was, you know, the re-inspiration there, but I feel like that wasn't as, I guess, on the nose as Raven was. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, hell, I would be fine if we got both of them, and maybe they made them play more differently from each other. I think they did actually make Master Raven, if I remember correctly, actually use the blades in her moveset, which was actually really friggin' cool, admittedly. I do, and then Street Fighter Cross Tekken, I remember Raven did use blades in his moveset, but he's never really used them in the Tekken games. So yeah, please, have bring Raven back, or just fine, just have Master Raven if the force comes to worst. Number four. Devil Jin. So now for this list, I've mainly been avoiding the... Ones that, were, that I feel like would be shoo-ins, the ones that I feel like have solidified roster spots. Before the trailer, I would have actually said Double Jin would be a solidified character. However, after seeing some of the gameplay and seeing that Jin kind of turns into his devil self for his special move, that kind of makes me a little concerned that Double Jin may not be a full-on character anymore. Now, it's really hard to tell because it's weird because he only uses one wing in the trailer. After that, it does seem like there is more to it where he kind of breaks that chain, I guess, symbolizing that he's kind of breaking the, the, the bonds that restrain him or whatever. And then that kind of link turns into the eight for Tekken eight. So it is hard to say, maybe he turns into double for the rest of the match after this, I don't know. And it is possible that maybe just for his super move this time, he does actually, he, he just uses the double power and then goes back to the regular which is fine, and the Devil Jin will just be his full-on character again. It is also possible, and I would be okay with this, if Jin functioned like like Devil Kazuya did in Tekken Tag 2, where Kazuya had an input where he would turn into the Devil Mode and stay in that, in that for the rest of the match, or unless you switched back, with just some slightly different moves and properties. I just don't know if they'd be able to kind of change his whole moveset with, with that, because it would be a much more drastic change than, than, De than Kazuya to Devil Kazuya. And since we're on the subject, um, can we please bring back the transformation mechanic for Kazuya turning double Kazuya again? That was awesome, and I think that was a good way to kind of kill two birds with one stone. Number three. Kunimitsu. So now with Kunimitsu, so she was a character we, you know, we wanted to come back in the mainline games for a while, and we finally kind of got that in Tekken 7. She was one of the last DLC characters, which was already frustratingly enough, she should have been one of the first in my opinion. But it turns out that this version of Kunimitsu wasn't the one we, we knew from back then, it was actually her daughter. Now, while this isn't ideal, I would have rather been that original Kunimitsu, I'm okay with it being her daughter, especially because she has a lot of similarities anyway. She's always just wearing a mask. So here's the thing though. Now Harada, you have absolutely no excuse to not bring this character back now. If age was the main thing or that she died or whatever, well, you have a new version of her and there should be no reason to exclude her. She should be at least, I don't want to say like a shoo-in, but she should at least make it to the next game, especially since she, since she was added so late. And she's pretty unique. She's very different from Yoshimitsu aside from I think a few different moves. This will probably be the character on the list that will be the most frustrating if she does not make it into Tekken 8. 
and it would actually be nice to see her actually have her own story as well as time too. Well, if, you know, provided we get more than what each character got as a story in Tekken 7. Dark. Number two. So like Kunimitsu, it's been a long time since we've seen Jun Kazama in a mainline Tekken game. Last time we saw her was Tag 2, and that's actually kind of the main reason she's on this list. Personally, I never really cared for her until Tekken Tag 2. I don't know what it was. I guess just her design, just her fighting style, just popped for me a lot more than she did before. She was always kind of, at least to me, she seemed kind of generic before. But I really fell in love with her in Tag 2, and I'm like, all right, maybe this means we'll actually, you know, with a new drastic new design and all that, maybe we'll actually get to see her in a main line Tekken game. And I mean, hey, we were getting, I guess, Kazuya's mom in the game, so maybe we get Jin's mom, and that wound up not being the case. Um, now, I don't know, maybe with this more focused on Jin again, I guess with Hayashi out of the picture, or so we think, maybe this means we could get June back. And... Her fate has always been kind of ambiguous. It's either did she die, or is she just missing, or something. You know, we can never really get a straight answer there. And Harada never really gave us one. But I would really like to see June back. I know she does fight kind of similar to Asuka, but we have tons of those characters in the game. You can make her a bit more different. I don't care. I'm fine with that. You know, as long as I keep the moveset generally similar, I guess. But yeah, please, for the love of God, bring June back. It would really be nice to just kind of see her back. And I'm, I'd like to say maybe that's why she wasn't a DLC character because they want to save her to be a big part of the story for Tekken 8. And hey, she, you know, I mean, how cool would it be to have her and Jin team up to fight Kazi or something? Also, I don't know if this is going to help, but if any of you have seen Tekken Bloodlines, the recent Netflix animated Tekken show, she was a big, at least a somewhat big part of it due to the fact it was based on Tekken 3, and it shows her training Jin when he was a kid and all that. So I'd like to say this will kind of maybe, you know, increase the demand for her to come back in the game as well. But I'm not entirely sure. Honorable mentions. Alright, so here's some honorable mentions. I kind of have a lot of them just because there's a lot of Tekken characters. Give me a break. Lydia, I kind of thought she was a cool character that, you know, again, was kind of literally the last DLC character. So I feel like kind of the hype around her kind of wasn't much. And it would be nice to see her part of the story. Xiao Chang, don't have to say much with her. You know, kind of she's another character. I kind of just liked her more than a replacement. And she's a character that kind of gets ignored again. So we're going to see her back. Unknown. I highly doubt she'll be in, especially if, if June's not in. Unknown seems to be a specifically tag exclusive character, but it's not going to stop me from wanting her. Zafina, I honestly never really cared for her in Tekken 6, but I don't know, the, her, the way she was in Tekken 7 just made me like her far more. And I never really cared for Anna too much, but once again, Tekken 7 did make me like her a lot more. Number one. So yeah, this is kind of why Ancient Ogre was at the very bottom of the list. Not because I don't like him, but just because I like his transformation a lot more. But I've always really liked True Ogre since I got into Tekken, when I, when I mainly when I started playing Tekken Tag, because I didn't play as much of a te Tekken 3, and I just thought it was a really badass boss design. That's, they made it even better in Tag 2. He looked a little less like, you know, the, the beast from Beauty and the Beast, and, and the multiple snake arms was just sick, and I just loved playing as him. And I get it, he's a boss and he died and all that, but... Damn, I, I, he was just, I don't know, Tekken Tag 2 just, te just I think, teased me with too much, honestly. But it's, I, again, I don't want to see how you can't find a reason for him to come back somehow. And hell, maybe he'd be like the, you know, he'd be the big boss. Maybe Jin, Kazuya, and maybe Jun could all team up to beat him. I actually think that'd be really cool. I don't really have much more to say here. It just, again, it just kind of sucks that o True Ogre has to be kind of stuck in the tag games. I mean, I guess the same thing you can say for Jinpachi as well, another character I do like. Uh, but I guess it's been so much longer for Ogre, and it would just be great to see him come back somehow. I don't think it's very likely, unfortunately. But, hey, you know, I could dream. This is just who I want, not exactly who I expect. So, yeah, that's it for my list. I know it's probably a lot of hot takes. There are a lot of actually other characters I do like that I didn't put on this list, such as Dragonov, Lars, Aliza, Brian Fury... Uh, the only reason they weren't on this list was because I feel like their spots are a little bit more solidified, in all honesty. Because, I mean, hey, they, they survived, I guess, the, the Tekken 7. I'll call it the Tekken 7, 7 Purge. Um, but again, hey, I don't know. No one, I guess, is really safe, to be fair. 
But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'd like to hear some characters you'd like to see come back in the game, if you agree with my list or anything like that. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Like the video if you like it. Dislike if you dislike it. Definitely consider subscribing if you like this video and some of my others. It would really help the channel out a lot. But thank you so much for checking out this video. And as I always say, end of the time, end of the place. Keep being awesome.